Amen. I'm excited about our word today because we are launching our Advent season. Advent is the four days, the four Sundays that lead up to Christmas. And like I said before, it prepares our heart for the arrival of Jesus. And now we're just going to talk about it's the first day of Advent. We just want to ground ourselves into what it is and what it means. I hope you got your notes. I hope you got your phone app with your notes on your phone. I don't want you just to listen. We're going to be active. Where's my teachers? My active listeners. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Because by the time you eat today uh, and after you done took a nap, you're going to forget this word. Let me tell you. You better have wrote it down because after that nap is erased. (laughs) In Jesus' name. (laughs) All right, our scripture today is from the lectionary passage in Psalms 80, uh, 1 through 7 and 17 through 19. Um, It's fitting for the season we're in and what's going on in our world today. I hope that when we read it, that I want you to let me know if this resonates with you or not. Are you ready? Psalms 80, Brother Mike, can you hear me? Psalms 80. One, starting at verse one. All right, it says, Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts, Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one that is is at your right hand, the one who you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. I know that's a tough word. Somebody's like, I did not come to church for a downer word, but I'm telling you, God has a word for us in this. How many people ever felt like that? The, the, the words of this prayer, you just feel a little frustrated with God, amen? Well, that's great because what we're talking about today, our subject is called sitting in the tension. Sitting in the tension. Let's just pray for a moment. God, we just want to center ourselves in your word. We pray that you will speak to us personally and communally. God, we pray that you will be glorified. Let your word fall on good soil in our hearts. God, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sitting in the tension. How many people know what it feels like to sit in the tension of something, right? Um, I got a fun fact. Fun fact about me. I don't know if anyone, if I've ever shared this with anybody, but when I was in college, I actually majored in communications, which is radio, television, and film. That was, I was, you know, trying to be, you know, making out here, making movies and things, right? Fun fact. But I'm kind of glad that I did not become a filmmaker um, because my films would be terrible. I'll just tell you that right now. I'm going to tell you why. Because um, they, my films will probably be about five minutes. Because I don't have time. Because I, I'll explain. Because as soon as trouble happens in the storyline, I'm already like, um, no, let's get out of this immediately. Like, as soon as we pulled up to the house and you started hearing the ghost noises, oh, no, we're selling immediately. Roll credits. Like, that's my end, the end. Film's over. Soon as I start seeing red flags and a little crazy person that I was trying to date, oh no, we breaking up. 
roll credits, film's over. Right? My films would be a flop. No one would want to see them because to me, especially as, you know, being black and watching film, we got it easy. We, we solved the whole problem in the, in the first five minutes. Oh, no, we, we ain't even going there. Child, no, don't walk in there. Film's over, roll credit. Because that just speaks to their son that makes a story a great plot line. You gotta build the suspense. There has to be some tension in the story. There has to be some conflict. You have to have a villain. You have to have a hero. You have to be, you know, someone who's causing. It has to be all these elements to make a great story. That's why reality TV has been on for so long. How much more can we take? Right? But there always has to be some kind of drama. It has to be something. It has to be some tension. If you're ever, you know, the, the saints, you don't have to just look straight ahead. If you're watching scary movies, uh, you, we, that's between you and the Lord. Um, but <laughs> if you're watching the one scary movie, you have to build the tension. It has to be the music. You don't know what's going You got to have the fake scare that do the jump scares first. It's a whole thing to make it an experience, right? But none of us like sitting in suspense. We hate it. It's so uncomfortable. It just doesn't feel right. Like, how many people like roller coasters? Love them. You know, when you first, you know, even the demon, when you first, you, do you think they're building tension? It goes so slow. Click, click, <laughs> click, click. And you're like, oh, my gosh. Or drop zone, you get to the top, and they just like, Wait, right? And then they drop you. It's building suspense. Suspenseful movie. You ever watch the scary movie with no music on? It like does nothing for you. You're like, oh, okay, oh, right? It has to be some suspense. When there, those who watch sports, when there's like five seconds left in a game and you need a play to win the game with five seconds left and they're like, taking timeouts, and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't take it. You can't even look. Like, you ever see fans that I like, can't even watch? No one likes the feeling of sitting in suspense. Nobody likes it, and I'm going to tell you why. Yeah, see, y'all don't like that, huh? It got awkward. Y'all started giggling. Nobody likes it. It feels awkward. Nobody likes suspense. But yet and why, this is exactly why we celebrate, we celebrate Advent. Because Advent is designed to help us imagine the suspense and, uh, and the suspense and the tension that existed before Jesus was born. This is why we need, we got to imagine it. Advent, it helps us to appreciate leaning into anticipation and expectation. You know, everything that Christmas morning is made of, expectation and anticipation. You've been eyeing that gift for so long. Like, oh my God, you, some of y'all used to tear the corners. I know you did, repent. I know you did, and taped it back real quick. <laughs> Peeped in your mama's closet. I know you did, say sorry to the Lord. Y'all was just a, yeah, mm-hmm. Because no one likes to sit in anticipation. My point taken. Advent teaches us how to wait on God's timing. It does, how to wait on God's timing. And like Romans 5 says, it says, see, just at the right time, while we we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly at the right time. And every year we tell the Christmas story. We tell the Christmas story every year. There's song, there's decoration. I was actually proud of Christmas this year. It didn't start too early. I wasn't agitated. They didn't start it in September. I feel like they did a better job of waiting till Halloween. Like, just give us a moment, right? I digress. But we, we, we tell the Christmas story every year, but it's so important not to rush to the end of the story too quickly. It's it's really important not just to go, okay, Jesus was in the manger. Because we really can't truly celebrate the baby in the manger without sitting in the tension that existed before he came. And this is what Psalms 80 helps us to do. 
Psalms 80 helps us to imagine, the psalm that we just read, helps us to imagine the tension that the Jewish people sat in waiting for a savior. It helps us to lean into and helps us with our times of waiting. How many people are waiting on something from God? You're waiting on a blessing. You're waiting on a promise. You're waiting on provision. You're waiting on direction. You're waiting on purpose. You're waiting on your boo. You waiting on a job, a career, a change. We're all sitting in some type of tension. And I love that this psalm helps us in these times that we experience because the writer of the psalms gave us a perfect model for prayer. Y'all want us to be like, I don't really know how to pray. Like, it's like a lot and it feels like you got to use fancy words. This psalms really helps us because it's a real grimy prayer. It, it, was, just, it was just guttural. It wasn't, it wasn't a lot of eloquent words. We feel like we got to, I don't know, why did we speak Shakespearean when it comes to prayer? Like, you'd be like, girl, you so crazy. And, oh, time to pray. Lord God, our Father in heaven, we can give you all the praise. We turn into some other person. Like, are we code switching with prayer? What's happening? Like, use your regular voice. Why are we, what are, when did you take Shakespeare class? Like, we, and then we get intimidated. Like, dang, they put that together real good. I don't even know how to put words together like that. Right? There's no need for eloquence in this prayer. There was no need for putting words together perfectly. It was just, it's just raw feelings. The psalmist said, and tell me if you've ever felt like this, he said, stir up your might, oh God, and come save us. Like, God, what are you doing? <laughs> if you have all power and you are almighty, can you stir that up and get it down to where we are and come save has anybody felt like that? Like, I know you a healer, so get to healing. Like, you make ways. You got, you own a cattle on a thousand hill, cash me out a cow. Like, it, this one, I can win. God, you got it. And how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? Now, I believe that this is the psalmist's perspective about God. Because when you're going through, you feel like God is against you. Anybody be like, God ain't even hearing me right now. Like, how long you going to be against me? You see me praying. You see me doing the things. I went to church on Sunday. Like, you see me doing the things. How can these things be happening when I'm really trying to do what's right? Anybody feel like that? Y'all don't leave me up here by myself, because I surely have. It says, you have fed us with the bread of tears and given us tears to drink in full measure. Come on, those nights that you cried all night long. Anybody had one of those nights? I used to have to put the ice on my, wake up and put ice on my, because I've been all crying and my looking all swollen. I'd be like, I got allergies. Just like, I play it off, because I've really been crying all night. Anybody just, you cried so much, there's no more tears? Like, I don't, I have nothing else to give. You're just making a crying face with nothing else. Our tears, they continually come. God, you're, you're giving, this might as well be bread at this point. This is what the psalmist says. You've given us a full measure of our own tears. God, where are you? It's like you've made us the scorn of our neighbors. God, you got me out here looking crazy. Anybody feel like that? Like you really got me looking like a punk because I really could have just slapped them back. But you, you want me to be the bigger person. Now I'm over here looking crazy. Just know. You know, you trying to let them know. Like just know if I didn't have Jesus. If it were, huh. I would really lay hands on you. Got me out here looking crazy. Got me out here believing, telling people your hopes and your dreams and your plans. And you looking crazy like, girl, I hope it work out because... You ever told somebody your dreams, like, I'm going to be a whatever, fill in the blank, and it just don't look like it, and it's like, man, I really thought God told me this. I'm out here really looking crazy. You're making me the scorn. People talk about me. People back home is like, girl, you know they went out there. I don't know what they doing. Anybody feel like that? I've been there. Like, ooh, you got me looking real messed up. God. And it says, our enemies laugh among themselves. 
people making fun of you, talking and ridiculing you. You're feeling embarrassed. And you're kind of sitting in the place like, God, where are you? This is what the Jewish people were going through before, uh, the, uh, before the Messiah came. God, where are you? You said that we were, you know, you were going to hook us up. We're going to be your people. Where are you? Why are people laughing at us? Why are we doing all these things? We need a savior. And they sat in that for thousands of years. Now, look at our little lives. We being patient with a week. Like, I said it a week ago, and God ain't answered it yet. They sat in this waiting on a Messiah. Literally, I would even go back to the Garden of Eden when God made the promise, like, you know what? But a Messiah's coming. It's going to bruise your heel, and the, your, the, the woman's seed is going to uh, triumph over you. Way back in the Garden, they sat in anticipation of one day we'll be saved. One day we'll have a savior. One day someone will save us for our sins, but God, when? They've been in exile. They get captured. They do all these things. They sin against God. Old Testament is a whole drama, child. You should read it sometime. It's a whole lot. They went through a whole lot. God, when will you send us a savior? This is why Advent helps us to imagine what it felt like to sit and be like, God, when are you going to save us? When are you going to save us? When will this Savior be born? And this psalm, what I want to tell you is that that is what real prayer looks like. If you've been struggling, like, I just don't know how to pray, this psalm is your guide. The Bible says that we are to worship God in spirit and in truth. God wants your truth. God wants you to tell God exactly how you feel. He's not scared of your, your, your emotions. God's not scared of you, you know, you, if we throw in a cuss word, hey, that's the yay. He's not intimidated by that. Have you ever just said, God, what the heck? What is going on? Period. Amen. That is a prayer. God, I feel so confused. What is going on? Amen. You might as well just put it in Jesus' name after that. You don't have to make it eloquent. Speak to God exactly what is going on. Narrate your day between you and God. God, you know they're out here acting crazy, but you know you're going to have to help me. Talk to God just like that is prayer. When it says pray without ceasing, that's what we're talking about. Not on your knees speaking in tongues for the whole day and your coworkers wondering what's wrong with you. It's uh, constantly communicating God, updating God on what's going on now. God, you know that one in there. You're going to have to help me with. Okay, God, well, we on this freeway now. God, keep me safe as we driving. It's a continually just pray in your thoughts. Pray in your heart. You're guttural. How you really feel about the situation. God's not intimidated by you being mad, by you being angry, by you saying, what what we doing here, God? is actually what God longs for. So give God all your junk. Just throw it out. Just let it be. Let's just let it do all it got to do. But, somebody say but. Say it again, but. After every venting session with God, always remember to end it with but. Get it all out. God, this is, this sucks. I hate this. I don't even like this job no more. What do you do? But, but, I always add it, but I'm going to show you in Psalms 80, 17 and 19. I think I have a slide for it. After the psalmist said all these things, made a complaint before God. I believe Minister Yolanda spoke to us about that so beautifully. Putting your complaint out before God. And in Psalms 80 and 17, it says, but let your hand be upon the one that's at your right hand, the one who you've made strong for yourself, then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we'll call on your name. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. You always got to end with the but. God, I said all these things, but I know you can do it. I know you're faithful. I know that you are trustworthy. I know I can't see it right now, but I know you're going to make a way out of no way. After you have done all your complaining, add a but. But God, I know you can do it. 
God, I can't see it, but I know you will. The psalmist helps us and helps us when we are in our times of seasons and of waiting and sitting in the uh, tensions of life which we all see ourselves, even in this war that's going on. You know, we just had a, a, a couple of weeks of ceasefire, and it's just ramped up all over again. We're sitting in the tension of that. We are sitting watching this happen, watching human lives perish, and we got to sit in that. And we have to make a decision to believe they're like, man, see, that's why I don't believe in God. Why would he do all these things? Or we will say, you know what? God has a plan. God's going to work it out. I still trust God. These things are beyond my control. But I am going to lean in the tension of it. We, you even have friends and loved ones that you may not agree with their political stances. You may not believe in their lifestyle. You may not believe, you know, their choices. You may not believe in all. But, you know, we can still love people and sit in the tension. You know, you can sit in the tension of the relationship and you can disagree on some things, but you can still love people in the tension. Y'all know that, right? You know, we can, you can still be welcoming, you can be friendly, you can show the love of, of Jesus and still sit in the tension of something. Like, I don't necessarily agree with that, but you know what? Let's go get some tacos, let's go. We can sit in the tension. And this is how the psalmist helps us. It gave us three things, three things to help us when we're sitting in the tension. Three ways to pray when you're sitting in the tension of life. One is, God, revive us. God, revive us. That means bring us back to life. Breathe, in, breathe life into us. How many feel like you just get winded by life? You just, you don't have, I have nothing else to give. This, this word, it comes from the word ruach, when God first breathed the breath of life into Adam. Matter of fact, every breath that we breathe, we're still breathing in the ruach breath of God. Every time we breathe, we're taking in life and we're taking, so God, will you put new life into us? Will you put wind into our sails? Will you bring us back? Will you resuscitate us? You know, uh, anybody, uh, did anybody run marathons? I do not. Okay, yes, Mooney, our one shining star champion. You know, when you're like halfway through or you just, sometimes you just, you know, runners get a thing that I've heard of called a second wind, right? Or athletes get it. You think you are done. I have nothing else to give. But then a second wind comes, a new burst of energy, a new like, okay, okay, I can finish now. That's how we need God to revive us. That's a prayer to pray when you're sitting in intention. Another prayer to pray is God, restore us. It said it so much in this, uh, in this psalm, restore us. God, put me back to the original intent. Put me back to where I was before I got distracted. Put me back on my purpose before I let somebody talk me out of it. Put me back on my good habits I used to have before I, before I fell off. Restore me. Restore me back to my positive way of thinking. I used to be a happy, positive person before I became bitter and jaded. Restore me, God. Revive us. Restore us. And I love the last one. Make your face shine on us. What a beautiful analogy of what we would love for God to do in these moments. It literally means, to shine literally means it's like the breaking of a new day. Anybody ever been out when the sun first comes up? And it just is beautiful how the sun just breaks over the horizon. This is the picture the Psalms give us. God, will you shine on us like that? When I'm in my darkest moment, when it feels like I can't go on anymore, will you just break the dawn and will you just shine forth in my darkness, the darkness in my mind, the darkness in my soul? God, will you shine? Ain't nothing like a good light to shine in a dark place. You know it because you try to plug up your phone in the dark. And it never works out. I know I know where that outlet is. In the dark, 
It ain't nowhere to be found until you shine a light. You ever spend the, you ever, you know, spend the night over at someone's house or go visit somebody and you're not familiar with the territory and you try to get up at night and go to the bathroom and then there ain't no lights on? Yeah. You probably got some toe injuries. You got, you ran into a wall, you know, right? We, this is how we, how we're groping about in life without light. God, will you bring light to the situation? God, make your face shine upon us. Because when God shines, God shines with favor. When God shines, God shines with blessing. When God shines, God shines with deliverance. God, cause your face to shine. Turn this way. If you just turn our way, oh God, everything is going to be okay. Shine your light on us. How many would love for the Lord to shine? What a beautiful testimony to just feel it in your soul like, God, I feel you shining on me. You ever feel like some light was on you? Like, ooh, I feel the warmth of God's embrace shining on us. Hallelujah. So as we go through this Advent season, I feel like God is inviting us to lean into holy expectation, right? Perhaps your life feels like a movie plot. Anybody feel like your life is full of drama? Like every time I turn around, it's something else. Like you got a real script for a reality show. Some of us got going on. But maybe God is building tension in your story. Maybe God is developing the plot line to your testimony. Maybe God is bringing you through something to eventually get the glory Y'all do know our God is rather dramatic. <laughs> did, you, did you not know this about God? I need you to read the Old Testament. They walked through a whole sea. God, was that in there? You, okay, you just showing out at this point. God does things in dramatic fashion. Why? So that you could say, man, that was only God. We, <laughs> ain't no way. We went through a sea, bro. Like, What? That was only God. Only God could have done that. So God waits till we run out of our own human ingenuity, when we run out of our smart ideas and our well-developed plans, and we go and we get into a place where God is like, yeah, now you see only I can do it. Only I can do it. God's building the tension on your life. Think about what you're going through right now. Think about what you're waiting on right now. Could it be that God is just building Tension, building suspense so that you can be like, oh, only God did it. Only God wants the glory. So I'm going to invite you to surrender the writer's pen to your plot. Surrender the pen. Surrender trying to write your own story and then handing it to God. Be like, yeah, can you just approve this and we could just keep on going? Surrender the pen. Say, God, you write the story. You, you control the narrative now. I'm going to follow whatever you do. Because there's something amazing happens when you sit in the tension. Come on, y'all got to, y'all got to, sometimes you just got to sit in there. Anybody ever took an a, a ice bath before? Can you raise your hand if you, ooh, God bless y'all if you did. You did. I can't never get past my ankle and then I'm done. But there's something about when you coach, when you finally get in, and you just sit in it. You will never get the benefits of it hopping in and out. You sometimes you just gotta sit in that thing. Anybody been in a sauna before? And it'd be like, ooh, I'm about to pass out. But in order to get all those toxins out, that's a whole nother word. You gotta sit in it. Sit in it. Sit in the tension. A lot of times we run from it. We numb it. I don't want to sit in it. I got to keep myself busy. We always moving and, moving and grooving. No, sometimes you got time alone to sit. Some of us can't even sit in silence. Got to have stuff going on all the time. Got to have radio, TV, music. Got to Because you don't want to just... God wants inviting us to sit in it. Because while you are sitting in it, something amazing is happening inside of you. It's not for, God's not torturing you. 
God's not building suspense for suspense sake. Something's happening inside of you when you just sit in it. God is developing you when you're sitting in it. When, God, when you're just sitting in the fire, God is refining you. God is taking out all the dross and all the impurities, just like in that sauna. When you just sit in it, God is doing something in you. Just like resistance training. We talked about this here. When you, when you sit in resistance, anybody ever did resistance training? It hurts at first, but it's doing something. It's building you. It's building your muscle. God is fortifying your spiritual muscle if you just sit in the tension. Come on, say sit in the tension. So as I close, you know, you watch a movie differently when you know the ending, right? You know, it might be your favorite movie, but you know, you don't get all scared like you used to. Like, oh my gosh, no. You're like, you don't do all that because you're like, oh, he's going to be all right. Right? You watch a movie differently when you know the it, it ending. So can I give you an Advent spoiler alert? Um, Jesus was born. <laughs> In case you didn't know, Jesus was born. All the tension that people sat in for, mil- for, for thousands of years finally came to an end. Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah, was born. Amen. It came, we are so great, we are so blessed to be on the other side of this story. Did you, have you ever said, did you ever think about where you are positioned in history? That we wasn't, we weren't the ones waiting, that we on the ones on the receiving end of that? That's enough to shout right now. Why would God need you to be born at this time, at this place? You can't listen to the enemy who wants to tell you you're not supposed to be here. Why else would God plant you at this time in history unless there was a plan for your life? I'm going to leave that alone. But can I give you a spoiler alert for your life? (laughs) Just like God showed up, just like Jesus showed up, God is going to show up in your life. He's going to show up in your life. Every tension that you're sitting on, just like they were waiting on Jesus, we are waiting on Jesus to show up. There will be a new birth in your life. Did anybody believe that? That there will be new birth. There will be resurrection. Anybody believe that? There will be resurrection in your life, just like the story of Jesus. And how you wait matters. If you was going to write something down, that would be the one thing to write down. How you wait matters. You can wait scratching like your nails in the concrete the whole time, or you can enjoy the journey. Just like I said, that little kid that just goes with their parent and not tripping like, oh, we, we going wherever we go, and we going, food going to be taken care of, lodging, whatever. I'm just here for the ride, as opposed to that one kid that asking questions every five minutes. Are we there? Where are we going? Where are we stopping? We're there like, what time is it? Girl, you don't need to know what time it is. Why are you asking times? Right? So you can either relax and enjoy the journey, or you're going to get to the same destination. You're going to eventually get to where you're going. But how you wait matters. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is while you're waiting, God is working. While you're waiting, God is working. So if you're sitting in the tension of life, just know You serve a God that has not forgotten you, that God knows your timeline, and your timeline is not supposed to be like anybody else's timeline, that you, can I tell you that you are right on time in heaven's perspective, on heaven's timeline? You are right on time, in case you didn't know. I mean, here's our reflection questions, and then we're going to move to our time of communion, so those who are doing communion, you could start preparing. In our reflection questions, it'd be great in your own time with God to write a list of the places where you are sitting in the tension of life. Come on, I want you to sit down and name it. God, I'm waiting on this. I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting on this. I was hoping for that. I still haven't seen this yet. Someone gave me a prophecy about this, but I ain't seen it, right? Write it all down. Then once you've written it, go back to what the psalmist did. 
Ask God to revive you. Ask God to restore you. Ask God to shine God's face on you while you're waiting. God, while I'm sitting in this moment, breathe new life into me. Restore my mind. Restore the peace. Restore joy. And God, let your face shine. Let me feel the light of your love. Let me feel it. I want to experience it. Some of these things we just talk about, but how many people are like, no, I want to experience what you're saying. I want to experience the things that are written in the Bible. I want to know it for myself. I want to have a story. All right, if you want a story, it's going to have to follow the whole plot line, okay? If you want a testimony, you're going to have to go through all the phases of a, what a great story is. Amen. Amen. Let's just have everyone stand. We're going to start with our communion time. Let's just close out this with a prayer. Lord, we thank you. Will you please help us while we sit in the tension? We thank you for Advent and what it teaches us. We pray, God, that we won't run away from times of waiting that we will learn just to sit and be hopeful and have anticipation and be expected because we believe in your character. Strengthen us today. Come on, lift your hands if you want strength. God, strengthen me. Help me. I can't do this alone. I get worried. I get anxious. I don't know what to do sometimes. I'm confused. God, I need your help. God, help me as I sit and I wait on you. And I thank you that I already know the end of the story, that you always come through. <laughs> you always get the glory. You turn, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. So we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, let's have our